gracious Heavenly Father, we come to do that very thing, to praise you, to give you thanks. What a wonderful life we have, Lord. And what an easy life we have compared to the millions across the world. And we come to give you praise and thanks, and we ask, Lord, you continue to bless our nation, to get it back to where it belongs. Let us come, and as a nation, begin to praise and give you the glory. We pray for everyone that's here, Lord, that you would touch their hearts and lives, that you would go away praising and giving you thanks and glory. We ask you to be in this service. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Today we're in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. A song from days gone by asked the question, when will we ever learn? I don't know if that's a secular song or what. That's about all I remember of it. But it's a good question for us today. The world has said that everything is okay. Now I would hope that Christians would know that which is sin and that which is not. Are we going to follow God's word or are we going to make up our own Bible as people are doing even though they are not aware of it? I see sadly many misguided Christians that are agreeing with the world. Now you can be forgiven of all sins. All this is except one. What is it we cannot be forgiven of? Denying Jesus. Denying Jesus Christ as our Savior. Christians, please don't show your ignorance of God's Word. Know what God's Word says. That this is sinful. Do not tell anyone it's okay. The young people are not understanding that the world goes out and says, well, I voted this in and it's okay, but it is not okay according to God's word. Do not be fooled. God will not be mocked. It doesn't matter what I think, but what the scriptures say is important. God today in Ephesians gives us three Pictures. It's been said that a picture is worth a thousand words. You know, a lot of people get a lot more off of a picture than to do the written word, but the written word is in picture uh, word form. God uses three pictures in Ephesians to show us how to live. The first picture is of little children holding onto their parents' hand in precarious situations. You know how we reach down and take little kids through the parking lot and through the streets. We ask them to hold our hand. But what happens when they get a little age on them? They grow up. They make a point not to hold our hand. Because they say we don't need you anymore. This is pretty much how we do things with God. When we're walking through a rough time, boy, we'll just hang on for dear life. But when we come to that same thing again, well, I did that really well. I don't need God. So he wants us to do as little children do and let God hold our hand throughout life. The second picture is of walking in love as Jesus did. When they nailed him to the cross, what did Jesus say? Forgive them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When people are hateful to us, let us have that same compassion and say that to them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Then we will have turned away our wrath knowing that they do not know what they're doing to themselves. Well, as much trouble as we have with the tongue, we have a little more trouble with some this next picture. What do you think it might be? The hardest thing in the world is submission. Nobody's better than I am. I'm not going to submit to you. You know, when I do a sermon, I mean a marriage, I have several women say, you take that obey out. I'm not going to obey him. Well, you know, I didn't write the Bible. The Bible says to submit to each other and so forth. When Jesus submitted to his death on the cross, what did he get out of it? 
He got a horrible death, didn't he? So when we submit ourselves to the will of God, it's not going to be all roses and picnics and stuff. We do not know what's coming. Did Jesus say, I'm just as good as anyone? He didn't look upon himself to have things his way. He clearly followed the Word of God, as should we. Now God in Ephesians brings out some things that I hope we can take with us. First it says, walk as loving, obedient little children. Our speaking should be in psalms, praise, and giving of thanks. Make the most of our time knowing that all will be exposed one day. I hope you don't get to watch my film. <laughs> Happy hour should be spent in praising the Lord instead of sitting at a bar drinking drinks. Wives, submit to your husbands. I didn't write that. God did. Husbands, love your wives as Christ Love the church. So first of all, we're going to look at walk as loving, obedient little children. Why and when would God want us to be as little children? All the time. All the time. He says, be therefore followers of God as dear children. Little children. God wants to see the beautiful picture, how we're to re relate to Him. Little children are a good example how sweetly they hold her hand with trusting completely. You saw the little girls walk out holding the hands. When our children and grandchildren were young, they hold our hand in dangerous situations, if we make them sometimes. As we cross the parking lot and street, they would. Sometimes we have to make them. Are we going to have to have God make us to hold His hand, to follow Him? As we more mature, that's sort of like growing older. Uh, I had a uh, thing happen to me the other day that shows I am getting more mature. I went down to have a scan of my neck, see how the arthritis was getting along. I understand it's getting along well. But I got there and the lady says, take off your shirt and put on this blouse. Do you need help with that? <laughs> I said, no, I don't think so. When she got done, she said, now take off your blouse and put on your shirt. Do you need help? I said, no, I don't think so. She says, I don't mind helping. <laughs> so as we grow older, you know, we think we can do everything by ourselves. We're somewhat like that. God says, take hold and let me walk through your life. So we have a tendency to try it by ourselves and then call on God. We do everything in reverse. But God wants us to have the same spirit all the time that is in a young child who listens and respects the guidance of an adult. And we remember Proverbs 3, 6 says, Acknowledge Him in all thy ways and He will direct thy path. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 gives us another good guidance. Pray without ceasing. Well, how should we look at others? How do we look at others? All kinds of ways, right? Well, he says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Another great picture of how we should walk with God. What a blessing it is when I can walk in the power of God in love no matter how hateful people are. I can have compassion on them, for they know not what they do. Even as Jesus said, Father, forgive them on the cross, I can also say that, even if I mumble it under my breath, I can say, Father, forgive them. We need to have sympathy for those who wrong us, because there will be consequences from God, and they will have to reap what they sow. It is not for them... But as Paul says, it's the evil that lives within them. I can be sorry for people who walk with a grim reality in life. Nothing seems to make them happy. When we follow his teachings, we are walking in love. Because Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
Our speaking should be in psalms, praise, and giving of thanks. When is the appropriate time to tell a dirty joke? Never. All right. He says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named once among you as become saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. How many of you have heard somebody say, oh, that don't hurt? We're adults. Let's have a little fun. But what does God's Word say? Let it not come from our lips. Not once. I'm already behind. Don't let it come from our lips but once. When we get together, we should give all give God the glory. It's better to meet in God's house and give praises. We're social people. We need to meet together. When we meet otherwise, a lot of foolhardy talk can go on. But will this ugly talk get us closer to heaven? Nor will our unchristian activities. For this you know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. This is not the way to heaven. It must be through Jesus our Savior. And since we're praying, preparing for heaven to be our final home, and none of this is going to take place up there, why do we do it? When we do wrong, there are consequences. consequences. Let no man deceive you with vain words, and boy, they're out there. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. People say there's nothing wrong with that. How do we determine good from bad? From the Bible. Lots of false teachings going around. This world is so full of it. They deny that what God says is sin, and they're smooth talkers. But God's wrath is going to come upon these children of disobedience, and we don't want to be in that crowd. Well, what do we do to keep from having God's wrath upon us? Follow the Word. Follow the Word. Stay out of that crowd. He said, Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Do not be involved with the children of darkness, for we too will not escape the wrath. Do not do these with them. As young people, you're faced with peer pressure. Much more than us old folks. As, as we retire, we quit going to work and start going to doctors. <laughs> We're not children of darkness, but children of light. light. For you were sometimes darkness, but now you're light in the, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We should be no longer ignorant. We have heard the scriptures, so we must study to keep our mind fresh. Meditate. Pray for the Holy Spirit to use the scriptures for our guidance. That is how we walk in the light. I can think of so many things that I cannot even remember about in my school year, and it's the same thing with the Bible. If we're not in the Bible, not studying it, we're not going to keep it up. How do we know we're producing fruit worthy of the kingdom? We follow the word. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide us by the scriptures, which is the truth. We will exhibit the fruits of salvation, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. We will show God through the power of prayer and guidance by the Holy Spirit that we understand His Word and are following it. The proof is in the pudding. Well, what are we to do with the fruits of darkness? We reprove them. We tell them, you're wrong. And don't try to have me follow you. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 
We must speak out against sinful that goes on. As gently as we can, we must tell people that they're living in darkness. You know, on Facebook, they start coming out all these shows, and every once in a while, I just have to interject that that's sin, folks. I'm sorry. And they, of course, pounce on me with both feet, you know. You want them holier than thou people? Well, might be. But I'm a sinner just like you. But I do know that that is a sin according to God's Word. Be sure that we're showing them the Scriptures and where to find the truth. It does not matter what I think, but what the Bible, the Scriptures say. Bad things done in secret are looked upon by God as a shame. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Even in secret will be brought to light, and it still will be evil. How do we know we've done something wrong? It says so in the Bible. Check it by the Bible. What the Bible says. We must make the most of our time knowing that someday all of it will be exposed. Keep that in the back of our mind. We're not going to be great on the curve like most people think they are. You know, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm better than that people that go to that church. So God's going to break on the curve. And sometimes we need to tell them that they will not be graded on the curve. He says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Whatever scripture reveals our sin is the light that shines in darkness. We are so grateful, so blessed, because the word to the wise is sufficient. We should be excited when somebody gives us the word, even if it goes against all our learning and everything we've had. Well, how do we know we're asleep or dead? You know, dead men walking? Heard that story? Well, there's a lot of dead men walking out there because they're not listening to God's Word. That's the way we know we're asleep. That's how we know we're dead. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Ignoring the Scriptures is the same as if we're asleep or dead. Let us get into the Scriptures and into the light. Do not waste another opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. A word to the wise is what? Sufficient. Are we wise? We hear the word. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. A word of Scripture to the wise is sufficient. Can we make better use of our time? Do you think we can improve a little bit? Well, maybe not you, but I can. He says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And of course we know the song says, work for the night is coming when man works no more. Oh, we, we're clo I'm closing in on that gap. Work for the night is coming when man works no more. Make good use of our time. Evil abounds. And we must refrain even from the look of evil. Well, how do we become wise? Study the Word. Read the Scriptures. Read the Scriptures. Follow the Word. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. How can we know the will except we read and follow the Scriptures? Well, how should we spend happy hour? They have that advertised on TV all the time. Happy hour. Come here. You know, they don't reduce the price on Pepsi's. <laughs> but to reduce the price on all those alcoholic drinks. Well, how should we spend happy hour? It should be spent in praise of the Lord. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. People do things not becoming of them. When their minds are afflicted with strong drink and drugs. We see that on the college campus all the time. Somebody was drunk as a scoop. A who the hell? I don't know who the hell ever been drunk. Anyway, they're just as drunk as they can be and people take advantage of them. Then they take them to court and all this stuff. All of this could be prevented 
If they be not drunk and have some sense about them. But happy hour should be praising the Lord, not drinking to forget, but listening to the Holy Spirit recite the blessings of this life and of the future we have. But when we're down in the dumpster, what can we do to lift our spirits? You know, some mornings you get up down in the dumpster, you ever done that? Feeling really lousy, rotten, and bad. Well, there's some things we can do to lift our spirits. And he tells us that we need to speak in Psalms. He says, speak unto yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Get up singing hymns. What is our favorite hymn? You know, I like Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. And then one of my favorites was, "Twas a life filled with aimless desperation. Without hope, walk the shell of a man. Oh, just singing those songs and praising God's going to lift our spirits. Once we begin to let the Spirit direct our thinking, we will begin to give thanks. We have so much to be thankful for. And I'm sitting around the house, I'm thanking Him for the uh, razor, for the toothpaste, the toothbrush. I try to just remember, whenever I'm in a room, to thank Him for all the things in there. And I can spend 30 minutes just thanking Him for all the things in our, our room. He says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in everything, even in the harvest of days, we have something that we can give thanks for. And what is that? Eternal life. That our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. No matter how hard the day is, I can turn around and give thanks to God for that. I might be getting beat up, I might be getting mugged, but I can turn around and give thanks that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Alright, I was asked that question a while ago, I'm going to ask you again, see if you're paying attention. What is the hardest thing to do outside our tongue? Submission. Okay, we're going to get into submission. Submit yourself one to another in the fear of God. We must learn our role. We have roles. The Bible tells us what our roles are. Parents, children, husband, wife. Practice our role. We must practice what God tells us because it is for our own good. Everything we do in God's Word is for our own good. Then we hear the word, no one's over me. But we need to treat others as the Bible requests using God's wisdom. Jesus said, Render unto Caesar what is his, and unto God what is his. Wives, who do you submit to? Husbands. Husband. Can y'all say that? Husband. <laughs> okay. It says, Wives, submit yourselves <laughs> unto your husband as unto the Lord. I've heard people say, you know, I've said before, you take that old bay out of that ceremony, I'm not going to obey him. I'm not going to let any man run over me, make me his slave. What is the first thing a woman should have done? She should pick a man who is guided by God through the Holy Spirit. And we should not be unequally yoked. How many of you picked a husband like that for that reason? Probably not any of us. But there is an opportunity that we can pray for them to be that kind of husband. God expects the husband to be the spiritual leader in the home, using God's wisdom to guide the home. We try to water it down, we try to avoid it, but God's word is that we must do what God's word says Obey. Well, you know, the ladies are pretty quick to come back with something. What do you think that might be? What have our husbands got to do? Okay. How should the husband lead, live? For the husband is the head of his wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is Savior of the body. Woman is not to be abused by man. Wives have your husband in this endeavor. Sometimes the wives are much smarter than the husbands, and I see that in occasions. 
And I say, you help your husband be the head of the household. And use the wisdom. And husband, use the wisdom that your wife has. Don't ignore her wisdom. Well, how many things must the wife be subject unto? Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. I didn't write this, but that's what it says. Husband and wife should sit down and count the cost of all transactions, go over things together. God knows there has to be a leader in all things. Otherwise, you have stalemates that could last for years. I know husband and wife like that. They live in the same house, won't talk to each other. If they do, they call each other names. And it's a stalemate because there's no submission, there's no love, there's no caring about the other. This is God's Word. Read it, leave it, follow it. And wives come up quickly. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. He says, Husbands, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it. Use God's wisdom in all things. Think, pray, walk softly and tenderly and devote our life to our wife. A Christian marriage presents us the picture of Christ and His church. That He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the Word, just as following God's plan was for marriage will sanctify and keep it pure, just as His death on the cross also keeps His church pure and clean that he might present in himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Those that follow God's word through Jesus Christ will be as glorious as the church, without spot or wrinkle or blemish. Well, we always say there comes a time when two becomes one. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. You say, For a man shall leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and they shall be one. How we treat our wives is how we treat ourselves. Isn't that something? Ever heard a man berate himself? Well, what happens when he berates his wife? He calls her stupid. Well, who's he really referring to? himself. So you don't want to berate your wife. For no man yet ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. If he calls his wife stupid, who's he referring to? Himself. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We are joined with God through Jesus, so we are one with him. For this cause Shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Be not unequally yoked. You don't put a mule with an oxen. You have to be, both be wanting to follow God's plan and be in His, and your love will grow. And he says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Just as Jesus left his father to be with his church, also does man leave his father and mother. Marriage is an example of how close we will be with Jesus. Nevertheless, let every one of you particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife that she reverence her husband. Don't wait until your spouse clear, cleans up, and acts right. Do our part willingly, as commanded by God. If they fulfill what God requires of each other, they will each receive more from their marriage than they can even imagine. So God through Ephesians today brought out these messages. Walk as loving, obedient little children. Our speaking should be in Psalms, Praise and giving of thanks. Make the most of our time knowing that all that we've done will be exposed one day. Happy hours should be spent in praising the Lord. Why? 
wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church.